Welcome to day three at 1830. The next talk is about hacks, a web programming language, because uh, it targets web servers and clients. Uh, the hacking in the subtitle refers to creating, not breaking. Um, please welcome from France, Nicolas Canas. Guten uh, Tag. Uh, so I will talk to you about, uh, about this project. Uh, it's not longer a project, it's more like working software. Uh, I've been working on for a bit, a bit, a bit more than two years. And uh, I have some uh, interest about programming language for a long time. And uh, actually, I wrote several compilers before doing this one. And uh, finally, I come up with uh, Axe, and I hope you will enjoy it. So I will just introduce a bit what Axe is about. So uh, this is pretty much uh, what is the web today. Uh, so you pretty much, I think you know already what uh, about this, but I will just go quickly. Uh, so you have client side and server side. On the client side, you have a web browser, and you have several display technologies that are being used to uh, display website. You have HTML, CSS, and Flash. Uh, so those are the three main things that you are using to display uh, content for the user. Uh, uh, on the web browser. And uh, for each of the technology, you have a programming language that can be used to manipulate uh, this display and to uh, just uh, uh, make it interactive. So uh, from the, for HTML CSS, you can use JavaScript uh, with these different implementations, but basically it's the same language. Uh, and for Flash, you have ActionScript, which is a pretty uh, uh, not so much known programming language uh, that is used to uh, uh, just write Flash content and make it interactive. And on the server side, you have uh, several different technologies because you have a lot of choice. You can't really choose what you want to install on the client side, but on the server side, you can send anything on the server. And that's a good thing. Uh, so you have, you have a lot of different programming language you can use on, on the server side, PHP, Java, Ruby, C Sharp, etc. And uh, well, there's a lot of different technologies there. And uh, and the server, you basically you access some kind of resources uh, for uh, doing websites like a database and file system. So that's basically what the web is uh, is today, and it's quite a bit complicated because uh, basically if you are trying to make a website with some uh, uh, HTML, Flash, and uh, and the server side, you have at least maybe three programming language to know, to learn, and to master, uh, and you have to talk between all these components. So what X is proposing is to do that. Uh, just forget about everything and just uh, uh, replace everything with Axe, and, and you will be fine. Oh, I mean, that's the idea. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, uh, a thing you have to do. I mean, uh, it's just a possibility you have. Uh, if you don't want to use Axe on the server side, you don't have to. Uh, be assured that uh, you can use it only on the client side if you want, or only on the server side if you want. And, but you have additional, uh, 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 additional APIs that you can use if you want to use on, on both sides, and it makes things more, more easy. So uh, during this talk, I will uh, try to answer three questions. Uh, the first one is, what are the features of X? Uh, what is doing? Uh, the second question, which is an important one, is why to write a new programming language? Uh, because that's, I'm often asked this, qu this question. Uh, people wonder why to write a, a programming language. Why not to use instead uh, this programming language that I know and that I could use? Uh, just please do something about it. Um, but I will try to answer this question and, uh, about uh, writing a new programming language. And uh, this is kind of a query question, but uh, uh, how is Hex different from another programming language? This is also important, uh, because uh, uh, if it's the same as another programming language, then there's no reason to write a new programming language. So I will try to answer these three questions, and hopefully I will try to answer, uh, I will be able to answer these three questions in this talk. So, Hex is a new programming language. Uh, that's something you need to know. Uh, this is not something uh, that's been done before, I think. Uh, and uh, it brings uh, its own set of API syntax and uh, with it. Uh, basically, it's, it's pretty, it looks pretty much the same as Java, if you don't know read Java, uh, from, the, from uh, like, uh, a beginner point of view. And uh, it has a standard library. So all things containing uh, array, uh, list, uh, hash tables, uh, math function, all the things about computing about, uh, that is not really bound to any specific platform uh, is in the standard library. And have you have a specific APIs, uh, because X targets several platforms. Uh, there is three platforms supported right now. Uh, several could be added in the future without any problem. Uh, there is a JavaScript platform. So basically, you have uh, the standard library. And then for JavaScript, you have specific APIs uh, for accessing the DOM objects, uh, for manipulating, manipulating HTML content. 
Uh, then you have a Flash platform, uh, so uh, with uh, APIs for doing sound, uh, video, and all the things you can do with Flash. And then you have a third platform, it's called a Nico VM, which is a virtual machine, uh, uh, which have also like specific APIs for uh, accessing file system databases and a lot of different things. So we'll have a look into the, these three platforms. But before that, I want to show you uh, some work I'm doing. Uh, uh, I, I build a company with some of my friends, and we are doing some of website, uh, a games website. And I want to show you what is the results uh, in, of X in action, actually how it works uh, when it's uh, running. If I can get Max the my, my house, oh, my mouse doesn't want to move anymore. I will try. This is Windows, right? Yeah, so just don't don't blame me, not me. So. Okay, I will try just this. <laughs> ah, usually it works this way, you know, and just... I mean, when you're at it, you don't have any other way to do that. So, pr sorry, thank you for your patience. Okay, so it's... And just restart. Hello. Okay. And uh, we are back with the mouse. Wow. Okay, so I will just I just running a, a local version of the website uh, on this machine, so I show you what it looks what it looks like. So basically, you have this website you can subscribe, and it's just some kind of game website we are doing in France. Uh, so it's entering in French, sorry. Uh, so you can buy this kind of small creature, uh, which is called Dinos. Uh, it's a little bit, little bit like like Pokemon, you know. Uh, so they have the, all different characteristics and things like that. And then once once you buy one. Uh, you can fight with them, so this is one, one and a half. Uh, it's, you have some kind of level, uh, like uh, life points and experience. So here you can see you have a lot of different components. So you have basically one file that is, uh, is entirely generated by the, by the server side. And then you have like some JavaScript tooltips. And here's some Flash content that he used to display the map. Uh, and for example, I can move on the map uh, with this. So this is an interactive map in Flash. And when I move on the map, uh, it starts a fight. Uh, so you can see the fight between the monsters and stuff like that. Get away. Uh, and the, the fight result, so basically the, the fight is entirely, uh, is entirely uh, calculated on the server side and the, only the result of the fight that it, it needs to display is sent on the, on the client. And the fight, so the fight is not interactive, it's already uh, uh, executed on the, on the server. So, oh. And uh, so, at the end of the fight, when you, when you kill all the monsters, I'm almost done. Oh, that's done. OK. Uh, you can see there's these things popping up. Thank you. So there is these things popping up there. And uh, OK, this is Flash. OK. And uh, this is HTML. So basically, uh, we are using JavaScript to just pop these things on the form of Flash. And it's triggered by the end of the fight in, in Flash. So, well, I mean, this is not really something new. Uh, I mean, you could do it with current technology. But the fact that we do it with X is so much easier to, to do that. Uh, I mean, you don't have any really to care about uh, spending time doing it. So uh, this was just a small show of things that you can do with, uh, with X. Uh, and we have already like several tens of thousands of uh, users on this website, so it's scaled pretty well as well. So let's have a look at the different platforms supported by X. Uh, so X first, uh, let's have a look at the JavaScript platform. So X compiles to JavaScript. It means that uh, you have all this set of classes, and it generates all into one single .javascript file that can be included in your website. So it's cloud-based, so like, like Java, if you know Java. So 
The good thing is that when you compile one class, uh, it will compile all these dependencies together and link them together into one uh, single .js file. So uh, usually when you are doing JavaScript, if you are using some framework, uh, maybe you are using only a few classes of the framework, but you need to include the whole framework because it's difficult to track all the dependencies. And for this, the compiler will do it for you and just only generate uh, JavaScript that contains uh, the, only the class that you need to use, actually. So, and then we have some... Uh, uh, cross browser standard APIs for uh, XML, XML HTTP request, all these kind of things that usually takes a little quirks between the browsers. You can do like, it's part of the standard library in X, so you can do it whatever the browser you are running on. So let's have a look, a quick look at some uh, example in, uh, in, uh, in JavaScript done with Axe. Uh, I'm putting the, the idea, I'm using some kind of called Flash develop to uh, just develop the, uh, to write X content. So this is, this is Product Manager, so you have just this JavaScript target. Uh, so here you have a, like output, so you say we generate to code JavaScript. This is a JavaScript project, it has a main class, and we will call a uh, main function. And here is the cl main class. So is it, can you see well, or sh sh maybe I should grow up a little bit? Okay, maybe this is better. Okay, so uh, what we are doing is there is just iterating uh, from zero to three because it's uh, four exclude, and uh, we are getting the get element. You are using the js dot lib got get element by id method, uh, which enable you to capture some element from the HTML, and we are changing the inner HTML property, uh, which is saying uh, I'm a sharp and the number that we are iterating. So we have this HTML. So you have this uh, x0, 1, 2, and 3 uh, that they are just reference from this code. And uh, so we will just uh, iterate into this four uh, div. This is a script that includes our source code. And uh, we just uh, inject some HTML inside, uh, so change, change the content of the HTML. So when we start, uh, you can see I'm 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's basically a way to manipulate HTML. So the good thing about this is that we can uh, also manip manipulate style. Uh, so let's have a look at this. So here I'm setting the style.background to red and the style at display to inline. And uh, it doesn't look, but actually the uh, language is fully ty completely typed. So if I'm writing uh, this kind of things, I have these uh, tooltips that show me all the like available properties from the for the uh, so if I want to say for change the color for example of the of the of the of the text of the style CSS I can choose red if I'm, if I'm putting other things I'm putting blah 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 and I'm trying to compile it it just says an error that GS style has no frame blah 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 uh, so I can bypass that but I will not do it now so I will take the put the text in blue, the background in red, and the display as in line. So, and then we start my, my, uh, my web pages. Uh, I get that this display is in line, uh, the background is uh, red, and the color text is blue, so it works. Uh, so let's have a look a bit at the generated JavaScript code. So this is basically what is generated by the X compiler. Uh, so it's, I told you generate one single uh, big, prog big uh, JavaScript file. Uh, so it contains a few classes. So you have the std classes, you have the, and here is a, our code. So you can see our code is not uh, so much uh, complicated. It's pretty much generate what you write. It doesn't add an uh, additional layer on top of it. It just had uh, one or two class more uh, for the standard library. But basically, it, it generates the same uh, of what you, uh, in JavaScript, of what you have been writing in Axe. So that's a nice thing to know. It's not, uh, it doesn't cost anything in terms of performance because it generates pretty much the same code. And um, we can add a, a on-click event, for example, here. Uh, so every time we click on the, on the element, we trust uh, hiding, and we put the display into none, so it will hide the element. So if I start, I try to put bigger. Okay, uh, so if I click, it will just hide the element. Uh, the trust go, goes into the HTML, uh, which call uh, this div here there. If you don't specify it, you just pop up a window, but we don't want to pop up a window, so you just define, uh, define this div there with an ID, and uh, all the trace, the trace we are doing in the code will go there. So, so yeah, you can hide all the things, and it's, I mean, it's pretty interactive, isn't it? So, 
Uh, one of the th other things we can do is that, uh, for example, if we just iterate for, uh, instead of iterating from 0 to 4, we iterate for 0 to 5, uh, when, we, when we run the example, uh, it looks like it's working, but actually, uh, if you could look at the errors, you will get an error that uh, LT does, has no properties because you're accessing some kind of new object because it doesn't exist. Uh, and it gives you a, a error number, which is in the in JavaScript file, line 63. And you don't really, want, don't really want to have to look in the JavaScript file to know which line is it, and then to go back to the Xcode, because it's pretty tricky to do. So what you want to do is to, to know in which uh, at which place it occurs in the, in, the, in the Axe code you are writing. So what you can do is just, you can turn a debug mode on into the project properties, and then you start, uh, you just compile again. And then if I'm refreshing, I get this uh, nice pop-up that so uh, the exception, and it say in which method it's been called. Uh, and uh, it shows you the, the world's tag trace. Uh, so if it's called into two methods, it will display all the tag trace that have been called uh, uh, and that at the place that the error has occurred. So it's pretty neat uh, to have this kind of stack trace in JavaScript. So let's look at how it's done. Uh, if you look at uh, the JavaScript generated uh, when, it's, uh, when you are in debug mode, uh, you will see that there is this uh, uh, $s.push and uh, $s.pop, uh, which is basically, uh, well, it's not really optimized. It could be, uh, some could be removed, but basically, basically it's what it's doing is just uh, maintaining a stack trace at uh, every point of the, of, the, of the program execution. So it's loading down a bit uh, JavaScript code, but this is some debug thing, so it just, you, you don't care. Uh, and uh, when you are making a release, you don't need to, you can just remove the debug code and it will just uh, generate pure JavaScript code. So that's basically what uh, X is doing with JavaScript. So you have all these uh, 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 possibilities to just write uh, JavaScript components with Axe. So we move on to Flash. Uh, so the problem with Flash is that traditionally Flash is seen as a proprietary technology. Uh, you need to buy the Flash idea to develop Flash content, or you can get some tools to do that. Uh, and, uh, the, FLA, the FLA format that is used to, uh, by the Flash IDE is closed source, but the Swift file format that is run by the Flash player has been reverse engineered. I've been doing that uh, for some years now. And uh, basically what Axe is doing is just is create a Swift file for you. It just compiles to Swift file, to Swift by code. And, uh, and you can just, uh, and it's an open source compiler, so you just can de develop any kind of Flash content with Axe uh, without uh, just getting any uh, kind of uh, tools from Adobe. Uh, and it works on, of course, on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and all the kind of, uh, of uh, other like open of, um, operating systems. So uh, it has some more language features compared to ActionScript, uh, like typed arrays and other things, and it offers better performances in terms of compile time and runtime. So let's have a look at what we can do with the Axe in Flash. So I see the small example. So it's pretty much, it looks like the same uh, compared to JavaScript. So you have the same, we have the main classes. But what it changed is that we, so we have a project there. And this project say, OK, I want to generate to Flash. And this is code.swift. And we call it the main function. And here you have this, um, this movie clip. A movie clip we are creating there, it just can kind of display content. So is it just something to display something, uh, some kind of drawing some context? And then we are centering, centering it on the stage. Uh, and then for each frame, we execute the loop function. A frame is just something that is a term of flash, which means that I'm um, in the, the main loop, OK? So when you turn in the loop, what you are doing is just uh, setting a random color. Uh, and then uh, you are drawing to a, a line to a random point. So we are doing some kind of random thing. So we compile and we start. So I, what we have is a flash content that draws random lines. I mean, that's not really something very impressive. It looks ugly, man, I would say. And, uh, but uh, you can add some kind of uh, nice effects. For example, let's add some rotation. So it looks a bit, I mean, more psychedelic, maybe. <laughs> and uh, you can have a come kind of this is a time, uh, time variable that I will just increment, and, and then I will change the scale also, uh, depending on the of, uh, cosinus of the time. 
So basically, scale is when you are at 100, it's maximum normal scale, and you can just scale. So when you're in life, it's like, oh, you know, I'm a little bit drunk, like, it's just strange feeling, you know, huh? okay? Does it hurt? Yeah, okay, I will stop. <laughs> so this kind of thing you can do with Flash, uh, but I will show you more you can do with Flash, because this is, I mean, this pretty basic thing. And uh, I wrote this another thing, sample. So basically, I took the same, the same source as the things I've been doing there, and uh, I added some additional bitmaps. Uh, this comes in Flash 8, and this is a way to store some, uh, like the graphics, the vector graphics, you can store it in some bitmap, and then you can apply some, uh, some filters to it. So for example, you have this color matrix filter, which is a way to change the colors, and this, you have this uh, blur filter, which adds some blurring to the, like, uh, apply some blur filter at, run, at, at, uh, at runtime. So I will change it, I will use main2 instead of main, and compile. So you can see it's pretty it's fast to compile. And then I, when I run, it's just, uh, well, it looks a little better than, uh, than before, right? So you have all this blurring occurring, and the pictures are fading, and so this is kind of things you can do with uh, Accent Flash. And this is pure code. I mean, it looks like something like one hour, less than one hour to write that, and just you can experiment with all of kind of graphic things if you're interested in this kind of thing. So that's, one, that's all for Flash right now. Let's back to the slides. And then uh, let's have a look at the third platform that Axe can target. Uh, it's called the Nico VM. So it's a Nico virtual machine. Uh, it's a small, it is a more small and lightweight virtual machine uh, that can run some kind of bytecode. It has just-in-time compilation also. Uh, it's uh, designed to be lightweight, uh, so l less memory is age, and it runs pretty fast. Uh, so basically what Hex is doing is just it's compiling to a .n bytecode, which is a bytecode for virtual machine. Uh, it's compiling, again, all the classes together into one single uh, .n file that you can deploy on your, on your server. And it has a lot of system APIs, so databases, file systems, sockets. Uh, so basically what you are doing for the website I showed you before, we are using uh, Neko VM on the server side. Uh, we are using a mod Neko for Apache. Uh, web server, uh, which is uh, 25,000 PHP. So that's pretty good news in terms of performances. Uh, and that uh, can, of course, it's 25 faster if you are using, uh, like computing, if you are just doing some calculus or uh, algorithms. If you are just doing just database requests, is, uh, the, all the, the speed is taken by the database, so it's not only the, it's not the code source itself. But it's sometimes faster than 20 times, sometimes a little bit slower, but it's around 20 times faster than PHP. So uh, let's have a look at something you can do with, uh, uh, with Nico. So OK, see my same here, I have a project which is uh, Nico. We are compiling to index.n, which is a default uh, file. So here we have uh, main.hx. So I will just make it bit, a bit bigger. So here we, some, we have some kind of anonymous object declaration. When we say, OK, Nicolas, age, city. So this is some kind of object. And then we will just uh, go to the main function. So you, we get the content on the, of uh, mypage.html, which is uh, on the local file system. And we will format it with the information. And then we will print it on the output. So format will just iterate on, on all the fields of these objects. And it will just replace uh, dot, double dot with a key double dot by the value. So if you look at my page here, um, we have a hello, hello name. Uh, I know you are age and you are living in city. So that basically we will replace this uh, this kind of template. It's very s a small sample. So this kind of kind of template, and we will replace uh, uh, the template with the actual runtime information you get from code there, which could be from any kind of databases. So it's not. Uh, so I compile, and uh, if I run, uh, it will just make enable to connect because we are connecting on local host on port 2000. And I will just run as a small, uh, this is a small uh, web server, which is written in Nicole, uh, in Axe somehow. And um, so you just run on the, start the server and just, uh, you can run it also on a, on a, on Flash, on a, on Apache web server, but for this example, I choose to just run it on this uh, development server. So here you can see that it's replacing the, the variables in the template system. 
So I mean, that's why how you write, you will do uh, for a website. But uh, website, you have also like parameters in the URL. So let's trace what is the value of the parameters. So here you see it's like the empty hash. And if I'm adding some parameters there, like uh, hello equal wall and by, by equal by, then you can see that you get the, a hash table with all, which is filled with all the parameters that are in the URL. And uh, also if I'm doing, uh, I can trace also the, the URE, which is uh, the one, the, the resource which is actually accessed on the server. So here we are accessing to slash, so we trust slash. But if we access to uh, blah, 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 so it's like directory, we get the re URE which will be blah, blah, blah. So basically that's how you, are, you will write a website with Axe. So you will just capture this information. Uh, the URE and the parameters, and you will split it and use it all you want to dispatch uh, to dispatch to the to a controller or something you want uh, uh, to to generate the web pages. So I mean that's pretty low level. You don't have any kind of big frameworks, you know. It's not Rails, uh, but uh, you can do pretty much what you want with it, and it's quite simple to use. Uh, we have already some libraries for helping with that kind of things and uh, just helping you to structure uh, a web. Uh, a website with this, but you don't have to use it. So uh, let's have a look at some uh, other features of the of the web of a of a web service writing in Axe. Is that uh, if I'm doing that, I will uh, just get older, okay? But uh, if I start the the web page, oh, what's wrong? Okay. And if I reload the web page, it doesn't change my age. Okay? This is why, because every time you just uh, make a request to the web server, the bytecode is reloaded, and it's just everything gets uh, initialized, initialized again. So that's, I mean, that's a normal ap application. It's pretty much normal for all the, the website. But what if I want to, for example, to get this information in some kind of big XML, and I want to cache it somehow? Uh, what I can do is just uh, I can call uh, this, this method, which is called cache module. And you say, okay, next time uh, we will, uh, uh, next time a, requ a request on the same uh, .n file will occur, uh, instead of just reloading the, the, the web, the, the bytecode, uh, just call this main function instead. Just call this function. So I'm passing it there in a function, which is the main function there. And say, okay, next time use this entry point to uh, initialize, uh, to call my, uh, my, uh, my website. So basically, if I'm doing that, and I'm refreshing the web page, you can see that the, well, the edge is increasing. And if I, okay, usually when, you, when I modify the, the .n website, the .n file, it will just reload on the same next time. But uh, it's not working with an echo dev server, so I will just restart the server. And if I restart the server and I access it again, of course the cache is clear, so we start restarting from 28. So, with kind of things, you can pretty much catch uh, any kind of static data you have and uh, just be able to uh, have one website with a lot of uh, some kind of shared memory, which is all the statics. And uh, you can make some kind of persistence out of it. And uh, of course, if you want to modify the data, it's better to store it in, into the database because you are sure that if you will have a crash or something, you can just get it, get it back. But for a lot of data that is not modified so much, or that it's just statistics, you know, you can just store it into memory, so it makes a lot of sense. And it really speeds things really a lot, because uh, the whole bytecode is into memory already, and you don't have to initialize all the classes, so it just, uh, well, you get a lot of speed out of it. So, but this is not also only the, you don't have ready to, uh, to use uh, some kind of web server to develop uh, with, uh, uh, with Neko, because uh, it's also a virtual machine, so you can use it uh, uh, from, uh, from command line as well. So if I go to uh, bureaus and then what is X, this is it, and then OK. And then I can call Neko, so this is uh, like a uh, command line for starting uh, 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 the virtual machine, and I'm just using uh, index.n, which is uh, the file that I brewed. And you can see it generating the, the, the code and printing it on the standard output. So basically what you can do is just uh, uh, you can write a web server. And then you can also like call it from command line with uh, uh, any kind of things you want. So, for example, if I trace the, the URI there, I compile. So here is slash, but I can call it with uh, blah, blah, blah. So 
So this is the first parameter. This is like kind of, and you see that if we execute the blah, 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 it's just pretty much the same. I think if I pass in the parameters, uh, well, it will just, well, it will just pass the URL as well. So that's uh, basically how it works. So, so uh, we're pretty much done into just uh, doing some uh, introduction of the different platforms supported by Axe. Uh, but what you can do is uh, basically when you are just writing code, if you are not using any specified API, uh, which is a file system or flash display or JavaScript uh, uh, access, uh, you can write code that compiles the same on all platforms supported by uh, Axe. And, uh, but that's a possibility that you can use where it matters because you don't really want uh, to write cross-platform code all the time. I mean, if you are doing some video, it's obviously you will do it in Flash. You can do it in JavaScript, and you can do it in, uh, on the server side. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, if you are doing some kind of database access, you can do it directly in Flash. It will be not very good. So uh, where it matters, for example, uh, is when you have a big form, and you want to, uh, to check it, you know, to check that the input is correct. For example, you want to check that uh, the username is not so much long, that the phone number is uh, well structured, that the email address is correct also. Uh, you want first to do maybe some checks in JavaScript on the client side to ensure that uh, everything works well. And then you want to do some checks uh, on the server side in case the user disable JavaScript or bypass it on, in some ways uh, uh, so before inserting the, the time to the database. So basically, when you are doing just form validation, and it can be pretty complex in some cases, uh, you are doing two times the checks, one time on the client side and one time on the server side. And if you are using uh, two different programming languages, for example, JavaScript and PHP, you will have to write the same test to, uh, twice and to make sure that both are, are actually uh, doing the same checks because uh, if you use their first by uh, checks things and it doesn't work and well it gets get complicated from there so when you do this in Axe you will just put uh, all your code from form validation in some class and uh, you will just compile it once for the JavaScript side and once for the server side and you will use the same code and the same logic on both sides so it's pretty uh, powerful this way so what you can do also is sometimes that you want to uh, let's have let's uh, for example, let's think that you have some algorithm that builds some kind of that data into memory. Uh, then you want to display it. And uh, di the notion of display can vary from platforms. For example, if you are in Flash, uh, displaying might be uh, just put it on the screen. And uh, if you are on the server side or are from the command line, displaying might mean, might, by, might mean to just save it as a PNG file on the, on the disk or something. So if you want to have this kind of uh, uh, different uh, behavior depending on the platform, you can use some kind of uh, uh, conditional compilation that will say, OK, if I'm in Flash, I will do it this way. I mean, if I'm on, uh, in a, on Echo, I will do it that way. So that's basically what uh, Axe ASM is doing. So this is uh, some tools that some library has been writing. Uh, this is a Flash 9 assembler library. So it just uh, enables you to just uh, code Flash 9 assembler, which is pretty cool. Uh, but uh, uh, I wanted to use it uh, on, the, on the Flash side uh, because I want to be able to generate uh, dynamically code on the client side uh, and be able to optimize uh, some 3D stuff or stuff like that. And uh, I want also to be able to use it on the server side because I want to uh, uh, maybe just compile at, uh, at, uh, dynamically to generate some Swift file or I want to just run it on the command line and then uh, uh, be able to uh, store the Swift that's been uh, like generated this way uh, with this uh, Flash uh, like assembler library and uh, reuse it later. So what I did was just to, to write all the content of the, of the code, uh, in, which is abstract. It means it doesn't use any specific uh, platform library. So for example, let's have a look. This is some kind of declaration there is all the all the declarations there for what is a like method method the field a class definition and different opcodes which are also opcodes for flash nine by code okay so all the definitions are, are are common on both sides on all the platforms and then there is this writer class that just uh, turns this bytecode uh, into uh, into bytes actually so it just have a taken an output uh, and then it write bytes to it, uh, depending on the on the Swift format. And uh, 
And of course, the output depends, uh, and this is there where we're using conditional compilation. Uh, what I'm doing. Here we have just, uh, if we are on Nico platform, what is an output is defined this way. And if we are on Flashline platform, then an output is defined this way. So this is a kind of small way to just write cross-platform code by defining a specific behavior for specific platforms. So this, this can be used where it makes sense. You don't have to do that for every code you write. So now that we have looked at some of the basics of uh, what you can do with Axe, uh, I will try to speak about what is, a, what is it to write a new programming language, uh, and what are the reasons for that. Basically, you write it because it's, uh, it's a new mix. It's something that is not really available somewhere. So you want to, I've been just doing, uh, maybe learning uh, seven or a little more than that, maybe 10 programming languages. And I've been using several of them for several years. So when you get experiences with several programming language, which I'm sure most of you have, uh, you start being able to compare things and say, okay, I like this stuff and I don't like this, but I like this stuff in this language. So, but if you put all the things you like of the different programming language you are using together, you end up with something that is not really working. So uh, designing a programming language is the ability to make choice and to, uh, to, uh, to see uh, what kind of, uh, to experiment with it, to just uh, putting something inside and being able to remove it at some time because you feel that it doesn't work well together. So I basically what I did for, for a few years. And uh, uh, what you want to write the programming language is uh, because you can't do it at the beginning. This is some kind of, of goal. I mean, being able to write a programming language is not easy thing, but the thing that you, when you start, you, you can't really do that, and you start, but you try. At least you say, I will try. And, uh, and in the end, you can do it. I, I could do it, so <laughs> basically it's just, uh, it takes time to, to learn, but when you can do it, it's also, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun uh, being able to do these kind of things. And also, that's the way evolution works. I mean, if uh, people were always satisfied with the programming language they are using, I mean, we will be back uh, 10 years ago or more. I mean, there is, uh, the way evolution works is some people are not very satisfied or they want to just bring new things. And in the end, it's better for the user because they are the ones that are able to choose what suits them. So that's my, my reason to, for doing some programming language. So I uh, will a bit past the time I was thinking, so I will just, I wanted to show you some code of Axe, but we are a bit off the delay, so I will just go on and you can have a look later. So I want to get, add a few words about a Neko virtual machine. A uh, Neko virtual machine is a small virtual machine written in C. Uh, it has a standard library, um, but you can, ha you can add additional APIs to it uh, by uh, just doing some additional C code. So, for example, people on the, in the community, they wrote uh, uh, SSL library, OpenGL library, SDL library, and they're making a lot of new, stif, new, new stuff with it. Uh, because uh, with Neko, you can write several things. Uh, you can use it everywhere. I told you, you can use from command line, like we did some like, tests with a web server. You can use to write a Windows application also. And not, I mean, not only Windows on Windows, but windowing a Windows application. Uh, which, uh, which run some games or some things. And uh, basically any kind of application, also server application, I will show you that later. Uh, so basically you, you can write, uh, extend the virtual machine uh, to bind it with the existing C, C API or CDLL. Uh, and then you can uh, uh, use these functionalities from Axe directly. Uh, and uh, it's pretty easy to, not so much complicated to do. So when you do that, you can just put in more, uh, possibilities in the virtual machine, and more possibilities to access the API in the language. So that's nice. Uh, for an example of uh, the kind of things you can do, uh, uh, which is not really uh, exactly web-related, but you, it's not uh, for the web, but it's a server also, uh, which is written in Axe, which is a server Axe Video. So basically, Axe Video is a, a, a streaming uh, server for the FLV uh, file format, which is a flash video file format. So this is a flash video file format uh, a a streaming server. So, and it's entirely written in Axe code. So basically here you have uh, uh, the client logical. So if you look, uh, client server uh, logic. So it's a 30, 30 kilobytes. Yeah, I mean, you can see it, but it's only four files and 30 kilobytes of code. So it's all the jolly calls that 
uh, enable the client to connect to a server, and that, depending on the commands, uh, will reply to it. And here we have also like 20 kilobytes of code uh, for the different uh, formats, which is RTMP, which is a format used to uh, stream the FLV over the network. So, and that's all. I mean, you have uh, a, a wall uh, streaming server uh, for FLV in around uh, 50 uh, kilobytes of code. So, so, of course, uh, it is so very small because it doesn't have an UI, right? So it's just command line application. I'm sure if it had a new UI, it would be a lot more bigger, but well. Uh, so we're just starting the server this way. Uh, it's running on localhost on this default port, which is the default video port for Flash. And I will start uh, also the uh, client. So the client also is written in Axe. Uh, it's part of the Xvideo distribution. I didn't count as part of the, of the sources, but uh, uh, basically it's just a small client that will enable you to do several actions. So you can, for example, place a test video I don't know if I have sound. Maybe I can connect it. Wait a second. This is a very funny Japanese video. Huh? <laughs> I need to get sound. Is it there? No, oh, this is microphone. My headphone is there. Okay. Okay. All right, that's with the hair and like things that's quite, quite funny. So uh, basically what we are doing there is just playing a video uh, which is on the server so we can see the different commands that are occurring on the server there. So we are connecting, then we are create screen, uh, then we are playing the test.flv which is uh, what the, the things the server, the client is doing. So when we click it's just pause, okay. So you can see the pause command that is occurring, and we have these timestamps which say at which uh, timestamp we are pausing. And when just we just click again, uh, we are just toggling the pause one more time. So of course, uh, look at the Mexican guy running us, so crazy. And uh, of course, if you are closing the, the server, uh, the video stops, right? So it's just it's streaming, right? Uh, so you have a small buffer, but you, the server can't control all the buffer is working and everything. So I will start the server. And uh, what you can do as well, uh, I can't demonstrate it because I don't have a webcam, but uh, you can record the webcam and microphone uh, that is uh, shared by the Flash player, and uh, it can record the FLV. So when you click there, and it will just say, oh, web cannot found, that's, that's sad, but uh, you can record yourself and uh, it will store FLV, and you can share the webcam uh, as a live, uh, live, live uh, streaming to other people connecting to the server, so you can build uh, conferences, uh, web conferences with a webcam and microphone uh, with this technology. I mean, that would be a good idea. And uh, I will show you, for example, this is a kind of video I, I built uh, when I uh, released the uh, Xvideo server. So I built that myself with my own webcam. So. so that's a pretty cheap video. I didn't have so much budget, so. So, <laughs> and this is pretty difficult, it's really pretty, pretty difficult to do. Uh, and you can look at that. Well, it's just slowing and uh, so I, I, I mean it's just uh, fighting against the evil uh, proprietary web video empire or something. Uh, voilà. You can see, see the complete text on the, and the, well, the video, well, yeah. <laughs> the Desta is a video streaming server costing enough money to destroy an entire project, an entire project. Oh, well, that's it. So you can record. Uh, so this is kind of technology that right in Axe. You can uh, just record the video and uh, just stream it to the client. So it's, it's pretty neat. So let's back to the slide. So. This is some example that Neko is not only about writing web application, you can use it also for writing servers and a lot of different things. So let's have a look about uh, Axe Remoting. Uh, now you have all these platforms together, or do you make them tall together? Because uh, uh, we have solved one part of the problem, which is to simplify the whole thing by having the same programming language. But how do you make things communicate together? Uh, 
the idea is to use some kind of X remoting, which is called a standard API uh, that uh, works, uh, that is pretty much the same on all platforms, and that connects uh, things together. So, for example, you can connect Flash and JavaScript together. You can connect in the two ways. You can connect uh, JavaScript to the web server. You can connect JavaScript to uh, uh, a real-time server. You can connect Flash to a real-time server, and you can connect uh, servers between them or Flash and uh, between other Flash. So all these kind of uh, remoting connections are possible. So you have actually one single API. Actually, you have two versions of it, one which is for synchronized calls, uh, one which is for asynchronized calls, because it's based on RPC, which is a remote procedure call. So basically, what you are doing is just sharing some objects uh, for, uh, uh, for a connection. And then people connect, and they can call a method on your objects, and uh, they get the response. And uh, it's based on an pro open protocol, uh, which, is, uh, which is using the serialization format, which is open. So, and it's optimized for inter interoperability, so it's not binary, just text format that you can use to uh, serialize values and arguments and method names when you are making some calls. And then it, you get back the value, which is also serialized, and well, that's the way it works. So it's a good way to just uh, make everything just talk together uh, transparently. So, how much time we have? 15, 15 minutes, that's OK, perfect. So, uh, I want to take a bit, uh, take a time to talk a little bit about X philosophy because we've been talking a lot about technology, but uh, I think that uh, when you are writing software, you, it's not about only about technology, it's also a bit about the ideas behind it and the way you want to uh, change the things. So uh, the state of the web today is that there is a lot of, current, uh, of concurrent technologies and platforms. Uh, there is closed, closed source one and open source one. Uh, in particular, like the Flash player is closed sourced. And uh, you have uh, this browser war going between Firefox and Internet Explorer. And um, well, we don't, I don't really know what will be the web in, uh, in 10 years, because uh, it doesn't have so much history uh, right now. I mean, the history is pretty short. So, when the story is pretty short it can, and it's evolving for so fast, you don't really know what will be the web in 10 years. And I don't think that anybody knows what will be the, ten, the web in 10 years. Uh, so there's a lot of possible evolutions in the future. Uh, one of the things uh, to, to show that uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is that uh, I will show you an example, of, uh, which is Xmasterix 4. Uh, Xmasterix 4 is, a, is, a, is a something that's being talked at the ECMA uh, consortium, which uh, uh, is a group of uh, trying to make standardized, standardized documents. Uh, and it's actually the name for uh, the code name for JavaScript 2. So uh, there is a lot of uh, different companies involved in this design of uh, these new languages. In particular, there is uh, Mozilla, there is Adobe, and there is Microsoft. I mean, that's maybe the three main uh, uh, contributors. There is also like Opera, Apple, I mean. But the three main uh, ones uh, talking about this technology are uh, Mozilla, Adobe, and, um, and Microsoft. And uh, well, let's have a look a little uh, for a moment at uh, what are the, takes, the stakes are and uh, how things are just being done. So uh, if I'm a bit criticized, uh, I will say that uh, if I want to be a little bit uh, caricaturing the, each, or each proponent that uh, Mozilla uh, has a lot of time uh, invest in, the, in the JavaScript. They are doing a lot of things in JavaScript for their own applications. But um, well, I can understand that they're getting a little bit tired of current JavaScript because it's not very fun to write JavaScript. So what they are trying to do, or what they want to do, is just to push for a new standard uh, with a new programming language uh, called uh, XMP4, and uh, uh, which is have more features and a lot of more things inside it. Uh, that will suit their needs uh, for developing application for the web. I mean, that's normal. Everybody is doing that. And uh, then you have Adobe. And Adobe is really siding with Mozilla on this, on this uh, of, to push for XMathric 4. Uh, why the, uh, Adobe is just acting this way is not out of interest. Uh, it's because uh, for years, uh, Adobe has been uh, well, which they know own the Flash, uh, because it, before it was Macromedia, now it's, it's Adobe. Uh, they have been seen as some, making some proprietary technology with Flash. And uh, they want to say, oh, we are not making anything proprietary. We are just using XMAS 3.4, which is an open standard. Well, we are on the XMAS 3.4 board. We are designing anything about it. We are providing the virtual machine for it. But we are open. And uh, while this, this kind of 
uh, this is a move to, to say we are not closed, we are open. But uh, in the end, they are sending you tools uh, because the tools to develop Flash is not entirely free. So, and Microsoft on this, uh, on this also is against uh, x 4 And I mean, uh, if I was Microsoft, I would be against. Uh, because you are, uh, if you have invested a lot of money and a lot of time into uh, developing your own technologies, like which is C-sharp.net and all the Silverlight stuff, you don't want uh, a new standard to come up and just uh, remove everything you've been investing. So Microsoft will never include a JavaScript 2 into Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer is still, uh, sadly, uh, the most used browser on the internet. And we can't do anything about this because as developers, we can't really control what's installed on the, on the virtual machine. Well, some people control that, but they are called various writers, right? <laughs> they just uh, put something on your virtual machine without, uh, on your machine without you wanting to do that. But uh, right now, there's a, I mean, the three people, the three companies that control uh, the web uh, and the way it's displayed to the, to the users. They are Mozilla, Microsoft, and, uh, and Adobe. That's the way it is right now. And uh, in this, uh, in this world, uh, things, nobody's really asking the, what developer wants. I mean, they just uh, trying to solve their own problems, which is nice, but uh, there, there is not really a, a, a place to talk about this openly and to decide what should be done or not. So, I mean, that's, that's a problem. I mean, I'm just posing a problem there about uh, how, well should we all, all, how the web should evolve and how things should be decided in the, by the community. Because I think the web is a big community and which right now is being driven by a few companies that are uh, just acting in their own interest. So, uh, my point of view about acts about this is it's kind of freedom because whatever the, uh, in general, when you are just uh, using a programming language, you are, it's come up with its own platform, with its own virtual machine. Uh, PHP has its own virtual machine, Python has its own virtual machine, Java has its own virtual machine, .NET has C has its own virtual machine. So usually when you get a language, uh, you get all the runtime with it and you get, you cannot really uh, run it on other platforms as well. Uh, because, uh, What's it? And uh, because uh, uh, usually it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's tied together. So some people right now, it's quite uh, uh, popular to be able to run other programming language on other virtual machines. For example, running Python on .NET, on running Ruby on Java, or other kinds of things are being done uh, this way. But it's not, uh, the language are not, have not been designed for that. And it's pretty, very, very difficult to do that. And in, in the end, it doesn't really work exactly the same. So it's, it's not, um, it's not a very, uh, uh, a very good idea. If you want to do that, you have to do it from the beginning by designing a language that runs on all the platforms, that it means to be run on different platforms, and by making clear separation between what is part of the language and that it works the same, and what is left to the platform and which will be like abstract and will defend on the, on the runtime. And that's what Axe is doing. Is uh, defining some kind of which is the same on all the platforms, but is leaving space for each platform to have its own properties. So, it's some kind of freedom for the future because whatever the next platform, uh, the next big thing will be, uh, then Axe uh, will be able to support it. And it's next, uh, next thing, I don't know, it's maybe Silverlight will just take off and I, I'm not sure it will, uh, but uh, I hope it will not. But uh, well, if Silverlight takes off and, uh, uh, and just get the, get, next, get the next big thing, then Axe will just uh, compile to .NET and it will just, well, it will work. So, well, that's my point of view about the thing, so you don't have to agree with me, but we will see that. So from some resources, you can do x.org, which is a, the X website. Uh, there is a blog where you can have a, some posts about what's occurring in the X community. Uh, there is a lead.x.org, which is a repository of uh, libraries uh, with either a command line tool that you can use to uh, download libraries and upgrade them, or, or like, uh, like apt-get or these kind of things, package manager. And uh, to finish, I want to have, to have a, a world that Axe is a really great community. There's all these different people doing great, great stuff with Axe, with the language. They are writing libraries, they are writing tools, they are writing a lot of different things. And they, it's really rare to, uh, to, in a programming language community, to see all these people uh, coming from different uh, uh, points. They are coming from, the, some are really coming from the web, they are coming from JavaScript, some are coming from Flash, some are coming from uh, server development, and they all come together and they are just trying to make cool things with language, and it's very great to have all these different people uh, playing, acting together in the same community. So, 
I would like to thank you. And uh, I, I hope that I was clear enough in explaining what is X and what is it not, what it is not, because there is a lot of things to explain, and it's not really easy to just put it together into one presentation. Uh, and I think I will we'll have time to, for some questions. So just raise your hand if you want to ask some questions, and we'll just. Hello, uh, the Nico VM exists for the BSDs, or at least for FreeBSD. Um, is there any project on the way to port X, X to, uh, to the BSDs? Yeah, so uh, Nico VM run of BSD. I think there is a, just a, I think someone sent me a patch I need to just to apply it for it to work perfectly. But uh, Nico VM is writing an NCC. So basically, it compiles on all the platforms that have a C compiler. Uh, it doesn't need uh, so much uh, tweaks. That's, uh, that's it. And for X, uh, X is written in OCaml. Uh, the X compiler is written in OCaml. So and OCaml is widely supported on, on a lot of platforms as well, and it's as available on BSD as well. So you can compile the source from BSD without any problem. Um, I have a pretty specific question. Um, as a JavaScript developer, you usually don't tend to like uh, writing JavaScript. You use libraries. Um, does Hakes provide uh, support for libraries like jQuery or Prototype or other stuff? Can you, can you re just rephrase? Uh, maybe. Uh, does uh, Hacks uh, or Hakes uh, provide support for JavaScript libraries like uh, jQuery? And, uh, so, yeah, what you can do basically when you want to reuse some code, which is in Flash, either in Flash or in JavaScript, you can write some kind of external interfaces. So it just, uh, you say, this is an extend classes, and you just uh, declare all the methods. And then you, you can create new instance of it and just call the method, and it will just work transparently. So, and you can put some types. So if, if the library you are using is typed, it's well typed. You will get all the, all the typing for, from Axe, and you can use these libraries as well. Uh, there is no, like, uh, currently a wrap libraries, but you can do that, and it's pretty, pretty easy. Other questions? Yeah, it's uh -huh. You mentioned standard serialization format for remote procedure calls. Would you say that it's feasible to call hacks uh, from other languages? If, and if that exists, can you make some examples? Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very easy. Uh, some people write, for example, they are using hacks with an Erlang server, and they wrote some kind of uh, just a small serialization. It's just one class. It's not very big. Uh, uh, and it, I already wrote it three times, maybe. So it's just, you can, you can port it, easily port it to other languages. And you don't have to support all the things, because there is, for example, classes. You can say really send classes between the two. But maybe you don't want that in your programming language, and you just want to send data structures. So well, it works pretty, pretty easily. So we saw that, that you, you showed us on, on Windows, and it's quite a nice editor for us. So what about the support for editors on Linux and, and other operating systems? Uh, support for Linux, you mean? Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, everything works on Linux, so... No, 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 the editor. The? The editor. Ah, the editor. With, ah, sorry, with sorry, the auto-completion yeah, and, yeah. and the debugger yeah. and then, I, I mean, ah, so, Okay, so uh, for the editor, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm quite already busy with all these things. So I didn't invest much time into writing an idea. But uh, what I did is just to all the completion stuff is directly integrated in the compiler. So if you want to uh, support uh, uh, Axe with, uh, for your own editor, uh, I have some guys in my company that have been integrating into VI. So you have the whole compilation thing running into VI. Uh, but you can do it pretty much for uh, all, any kind of editor you want. It's pretty easy to do. You just have syntax and lightning. I mean, it's just configuration file. And for uh, a completion, basically, you are just calling the compiler and return you some kind of XML that you just uh, use it uh, to parse to uh, display completion. So there is nothing very difficult to do, and you can support any kind of uh, IDE that you want. Any, any question? Yes? Yes. Uh, oh. I have two questions. Uh, first one is, is uh, does Haxe support JavaScript 2.0 as a source language? And yeah, uh, it's using JavaScript 1.3, which is a current one uh, running on all the web, the web browsers. And if JavaScript 2 uh, take off and uh, becomes the next, I mean, big thing, then we generate JavaScript 2, and there is no yeah. reason for that. Uh, I was meaning as a source language, because the, or 
or is it a very... Uh, and it's also a very generate JavaScript, uh, just JavaScript that can be run on current web browsers, which okay. is JavaScript 1.3. I, I think uh, okay. I am. And the second question is, is it possible, for example, to see uh, Neko as a VM for Python language? So oh. to compile the Python language as a Neko binary... Uh, by yeah, uh, Neko has been... Has and been, sorry. Ah. And if if you see that that will have some uh, better performance or something uh, than the native Python Python interpreter. Uh, Neko has been designed to run a uh, lot of different kind of programming language. There is current three trees that are running on top of Neko. There is a Neko which is kind of scripting strict, language. There is a Neko ML which is kind of OCaml for Neko, and there is Axe. Uh, you can put other language that run on top of Neko, but uh, well, you can do that. But uh, after, it depends on the language. Uh, usually, uh, Neko is dynamic. Dynamic is not enough to be able to get uh, uh, good performances and to be able to do it and support any kind of programming language. But Python is pretty, pretty dyna dynamic language. Uh, it has all this uh, like uh, overriding stuff. Uh, so I guess you could write a Python to Neko compiler, and you should get. Yeah, you should get, uh, at least you should get the benefits of the just in time. And uh, that makes sense, but uh, yeah, well. Uh, other <coughs> questions? When did you start to work on uh, hacks and uh, when did it become usable? Um, I started working a little more on hacks. Uh, before that, I wrote uh, maybe two or three compilers, a uh, little more maybe, and several programming language. And I started uh, really. Uh, I had this programming language called Motion Types we are using in my company for three years before Axe. And uh, I did a clean rewrite and I become Axe. And uh, so I started working on Axe, I mean redesigning the language and just writing the type system and everything. Uh, it was in the end of 2005. Uh, and uh, the 1.0 release was, re was released in the, I would say, it's a, I think it's the beginning of summer 2006. So that's a bit more than one year, one year and a half ago. Uh, first of all, thanks for your presentation. Um, a question, uh, is Hex already used in large scale product, uh, products and um, how does it scale in the back end? For example, when you use it as a server, yeah. uh, is it really scalable and how does it perform, for example, compared to uh, Java or Ruby on Rails uh, uh, projects? Well, Ruby is pretty slow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So uh, I will say it outperform Ruby and it outperform PHP. Uh, it should be on par with uh, Lua, which is already pretty fast. Um, I mean, it depends what we are doing, right? So if you uh, are doing a lot of uh, computing, I mean, uh, on your on the programming language, uh, then it's, it will work like very well. Uh, it will not be like Java, because Java is uh, completely typed and running in, they have very good, uh, invest a lot of time into making a virtual machine that runs very well. But at the same time, Java is very uh, consumed in terms of memory. So uh, Neko is, I think, uh, between the two. Uh, it's between, uh, I mean, you have Ruby, which is a less, me or PHP maybe, which is less memory, but a lot of CPU. And you have Java, which is a lot of memory, but less CPU. And I would say it's between the two. So you get a, a good, uh, I mean, uh, a good trade-off between speed and memory, which is uh, important for web development. Okay. And uh, we have uh, some, uh, some websites, uh, which are uh, one, the most, web most big website we have. It has something like uh, 16, uh, 116,000 daily users. Mm -hmm. uh, and it runs on maybe one or two servers or something. So it's just not uh, one server for the database and one server or one or two servers for the web. So I mean, it's it's scale. <laughs> so uh, what about the mtest compiler? You, you stopped the development uh, because of X compiler or? So yeah, is mtest development, I will just, uh, mtest is a uh, Ashton Street 2 compiler I wrote before X. And uh, yes, it's not, um, I mean, it's not that I stopped the development, that's just it's, uh, the compiler is complete, there is no bugs, and I can't insta extend the language because it's not, uh, I'm not the one, the one writing uh, Ashton Street 2. Uh, language and uh, Action Street 2 language is not going anywhere now because it's, I mean, it's re being replaced by Action Street 3. So basically, MTAC is done. That's, that is the current statue. It's finished. <laughs> uh, after there is some bugs, uh, well. So if you have more questions, you can just come to me. I will just stay around because I think we are out of time. 
So I would like to thank you one more time for listening.